Um, all right, hi everyone. My name is John Thorpe, and today I'll be presenting Bamboo, which utilizes preemptible instances to make uh, training of large models affordable. So recently there's been the trend towards generative AI, which I'm sure we're all familiar with, that's having a massive impact on the world and changing many industries. So uh, a lot of us are obviously familiar with things like ChatGPT, which is now powered by GPT-4. And there's also things like Dolly, uh, Stable Diffusion. And these, have, um, these are empowering things like virtual assistants to have a lot of new capabilities that were not previously seen. So there's things like code generation, for example, um, but then also drafting emails, natural language conversation, and even really cool applications like um, generating images. And one major trend that has been powering uh, a lot of these new emergent capabilities has been the increasing sizes of models. So as the size of models have increased in their parameter count, new capabilities um, have emerged in the models as well as in the size of the training data. Um, and so one thing to note is that as these uh, as the sizes of the, the data sets and the models increase, so does the amount of time taken to train them and the amount of resources required to train them. So we've now scaled to models that are hundreds of billions, some are trillions of parameters, um, and they seem to only be getting larger. Uh, now, for that problem of scaling to large models, there are many techniques that can address them. For example, there's things like model parallelism and pipeline parallelism which represent different ways of partitioning a model so that it can expand beyond the memory of a single GPU. Um, and while these help with scalability, they don't address the fundamental problem of cost. So um, with large mo models running with uh, potentially you know, thousands of accelerators that may have to run for weeks in some cases, uh, you can reach financial barriers that make it very difficult for research institutions or small companies to actually even experiment with them. Um, for example, it was estimated that to train GPT-3 one, one, uh, one time cost around $4.6 million, and these are typically iterative processes. So, you know, one way we can think, make, maybe making models smaller is possible, like using model compression, but there's a few drawbacks of this, which is that typically, uh, we need, for a lot of model compression techniques, we need a large model in the first place to then create the smaller model. And in addition, they tend to come with trade-offs in terms of the accuracy of the model. Um, and so we want to provide some, uh, a systems level generalized solution that can reduce the cost of training these massive models. So what we want to ask is, can we take advantage of some particular resources in the cloud to train, um, sorry, to train large language models at much lower costs. So if you're familiar with the cloud, a natural place to turn to is spot instances. We've talked about them a lot in uh, this section, uh, session, actually. And these are typically excess data center in clouds that are offered uh, at steep discounts compared to their full price counterparts. But a problem with these is that they can be preempted at any time, so they can just be taken away. And this causes a lot of problems for something like machine learning training, which is a long-running stateful job. And typically, they tend to be used more, more commonly for things like uh, inference or just you know, serving uh, web pages because these are stateless jobs. Um, so one thing I do want to note is that while we focus on spot instances for the purposes of reducing cost here, that the techniques presented are generally applicable to any kinds of preemptible instances. So let's see what these preemptions can look like. Um, here we can see two examples collected from two different clouds of a large cluster of spot instances running, and we can see um, how this, the size of the cluster changes over time. And um, as you can see, we tend to experience, we, there are cases where we can experience quite a lot of preemptions in short, short amounts of time, and there, <clears throat> There also are cases in which preemptions can happen in bulk, as shown in the red boxes here. And in um, a lot of cases, the preemptions happen because of reasons that, uh, or information that is not accessible to, cl to cloud users. And therefore, it is hard to make preem uh, predictions and react to these preemptions ahead of time. Um, 
There are some existing techniques which aim to address these kinds of preemptions. For example, approximation and checkpointing. Approximation basically says um, we can just use a subset of our results and still achieve a good enough answer. So at the end of every training step in um, machine learning, you typically have to average all of the gradients collected from each of the workers. Approximation says we can just, when we experience a preemption, we can drop a subset of the gradients and we'll still have acceptable, um, an acceptable approximation. But as the number of uh, preemptions rises, which as we've seen can happen, the uh, trade-offs in accuracy can become, become unacceptable. In checkpointing, which is where we save the model and optimizer state every few training iterations, um, we will maintain the state so we don't have to have a trade-off in act cause quite a lot of overhead. And so both of these uh, preemption techniques work well for lower rates of preemption, but uh, have difficulty when it becomes more common. So in our case, we're targeting uh, pipeline parallelism specifically, in which uh, the different stages of a model are broken up and assigned to each different node in the system. And then the uh, intermediate gradients and activations are communicated to continue the training. So our choice is to turn to redundancy, in which we duplicate one stage of the model. Uh, on, uh, we create at least one extra stage of the model such that we can fall back to in the case of a failure. So here you can see that each node in the pipeline is given one active stage and one redundant stage. And in this case, if the uh, second node in the pipeline fails, for example, we can, the first node can simply take its state, redundant stage as its active stage. We can reroute the pipeline, and then we can continue training with very minimal overheads. So this provides the benefit of allowing us to maintain our accuracy, but without having to have the long uh, restart overheads and reconfiguration overheads of checkpointing. But as you could imagine, there is a, a high amount of overhead that you can encounter if you do this naively. So, um, to understand how we overcome this challenge, we need to look a little closer at exactly how pipeline parallelism works. So in pipeline parallelism, each mini batch is broken down into a set of micro batches, which are then run in parallel by the different nodes. But as you can see, there is a large amount of idle time shown here as the bubble in the figure where we are waiting for the dependencies of neighboring stages. Now, uh, this is, a, in, in a more realistic schedule, we would run the backward immediately after the forward, so we wouldn't have a large bubble like this. We would have something that looks a little bit more like this, where we have the forward and backward stages interleaved, and these idle periods of time interspersed throughout the pipeline, which are shown here as the blank boxes. So one natural question is, can we then use these resources that are already idle to get the benefits of resilience and quick recovery while not having to pay the high overheads um, that we would if done naively. And this is the key approach that Bamboo chooses to take, which is to insert uh, the redundant computations into these idle periods such that we can get the benefits of resilience without experiencing excessively high overheads. Um, so to, there are a few challenges that we still need to address when duplicating the stages of the pipeline. For example, um, if we were to experience a failure in the, set, the node two here, we now have only one copy of stage two residing on node one. Um, however, now if node one were to fail, we've permanently lost state in the pipeline and we have to fall back to a checkpoint in order to continue. So what we want to know is if there's some way that we can avoid running into this problem. And what we found with, and was backed up by previous research, was that preemptions tend to be co-located within uh, specific availability zones on the cloud. So specifically, when preemptions tend to happen all in bulk, they tend to be within a similar locality. And we can use this to our advantage um, by strategically placing the different stages of the pipeline across the zone boundaries to ensure that when bulk preemptions do happen, they um, happen to all the nodes in the same zone. And so a set of failures like this would translate into a pipeline like this, which um, is a set of failures that Bamboo can easily recover from 
as there are no consecutive failures. Uh, and it's important to note that we do cross availability zone boundaries, but we only do this with the small intermediate uh, gradients and activations that cross stage boundaries, so the overhead is not significant. So to evaluate Bamboo, we ran it on a range of different models and data sets to get a sense of the performance and resilience. Here we can see the data parallel size as well as the pipeline depth used for each one. And um, we scale the pipeline depth of Bamboo by 1.5 times compared to our on-demand baseline. We did this for a few reasons, but one major one is to minimize the uh, likelihood of consecutive failures. To understand the effectiveness of Bamboo, we ran it on a set of real spot instances and compared it to an on-demand baseline. We also uh, saw how it behaved under a range of different preemption probabilities, and we also compared against an existing system. Uh, we also did comparisons of using different pipeline depths, so if we scale the pipeline further compared to the on-demand baseline, and evaluated using different strategies for redundancy and the details of those can be found in the paper. Um, I want to point out that our key metric here is called value, which means the performance per dollar. So to start, we ran BERT large on a set of spot instances for three hours, and here you can see performance on the y-axis and, uh, and time on the x-axis, and Compared to the on-demand baseline shown in red at the top, Bamboo has very uh, variable performance, so it changes a lot over time due to the nature of preemptible instances, but the average performance still remains close to that of the on-demand. Um, and it does this while achieving significantly lower cost compared to the on-demand instances. And um, so the low cost is largely due to the, in, the, the decreased price of spot instances, but also due to the fact that preemptions mean we tend to have a, a lower average number of instances total. And so given our uh, lower cost while our nearly similar performance, we were able to achieve uh, around two times the value of the on-demand baseline, which if you'll recall means uh, the performance per dollar. So to understand how our uh, metric of value would perform at a series of different preemption rates, what we did is we developed a simulator which very closely modeled the different uh, parts of bamboo, how it performed at different stages, and uh, ensured that the, the simulation results were close to our actual results, and then ran uh, tr a simulation of training BERT to completion at a set of different preemption probabilities, where here, the probability means the um, probability of preemption per hour per instance. So uh, basically, as the number of preemptions increased, we were still able to provide high value compared to the on-demand, largely because we were able to continue training without having to stop, um, but also because, and, and uh, as the number of preemptions increased, we were still able to provide high, high value because even as our throughput falls, our cost falls as well due to the uh, lower average number of instances. Oh. Okay. Finally, we compared against an existing system called Varuna. Uh, Varuna also uses pipeline parallelism and does checkpointing to provide resilience. And to compare both systems, we ran them on a set of real traces of preemptions that we collected from the, the cloud, and we recreated the series of preemptions and additions so that we could have a direct uh, comparison. And what we found is that um, Varuna frequently had to re stop and restart as it used checkpointing, so it had to restart for every single failure it encountered. And um, at both rates of preemption that we tested, uh, Bamboo was able to provide both uh, higher throughput and higher value. So with Bamboo, we focused on enabling training of very large models affordably, even in the face of higher preemption rates, by introducing re uh, redundancies into the pipeline and utilizing idle periods um, due to communication to provide quick recovery and high value. We've open sourced, open sourced the code for this on GitHub, and we are also currently working towards producing commercial solutions like these for problems like these with our startup called FreezeML.
Thank you so much, and I will take your questions.